This week, an amateur investigator by the name of Russell Edwards claims to have solved a century-old mystery, the identity of Jack the Ripper. He says that he solved it by finding a scarf and purchasing it at an auction. The scarf was supposedly on the body of one of Jack the Ripper's victims and supposedly soaked in her blood. And the scarf was taken from the scene of a crime by a police officer who passed it down from family member to family member until eventually it went up for auction. Uh, he claims that he ran some DNA analyses on the scarf and that there were uh, blood stains on it that did, in fact, lead back to the victim. He also says he found evidence of semen in the scarf and claims that the DNA analysis of that led to uh, one of the prime suspects in the Ripper case, a Polish immigrant by the name of Aaron Kosminski. So... Is this all as conclusive as he makes it sound? I have no idea. I am not a scientist. This is not my field of expertise. But luckily, on Skeptic, my website, we do have several contributors who do forensics for a living. So instead of me babbling on about this topic, I'm just going to talk to them. So now I'm talking to two of my favorite skeptic contributors. Don't tell everybody else. Uh, our resident forensic scientists, uh, Rachel Burks and Amanda Linebaugh. Thank you so much for helping me out on this because I don't know anything about this topic, but you guys know all about it. So, uh, so did this guy figure out who Jack the Ripper is? Uh, Broad question, throwing it out there. Uh, Ray, go. No. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> okay, podcast uh, over. Good night, everybody. Wow. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> Amanda, what do you? What do you? I'm going to disagree and say probably not. Okay, all right, that's good. <laughs> That'll be good for discussion. So, all right, one of the biggest things here is um, that sort of. Uh, opens up my skepticism a bit uh, is the idea that this is being published first and foremost in an exclusive in the Daily Mail. Is this yes. how science works? And no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that would be, you know, if it comes in the Daily Mail, really you should look at it like a million times. Um, I think that you know, historical DNA analysis is is becoming more and more common, especially as our our technology um, improves. And so, this wouldn't be this isn't even the first time DNA analysis has been done in relation to this case. <laughs> um, that was done for a book, surprise, surprise, <laughs> that came out by Patricia Cornwell, also on Jack the Ripper, saying that she had solved it and it was a completely different person. Um, so, and, and a, a DNA analysis of, of samples that are much older than this, like ancient DNA analysis has been published in the scientific literature. And I think that's the key part has been published in the scientific literature. And Amanda, is that, is that, does that jive with your experience as well? Yes, I don't really, um, I can't grasp all of the scientific detail from what the Daily Mail reports. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of questions that come up. Um, but but just, there, there was a very helpful video, though, right? <laughs> oh, yes, the minute long video, um, making sure to show them in gloves and Tyvek suits and masks. Yeah, that was that's, great. That's science, right? That's, that's, just Right? Yes. That's all you need is latex gloves and then you're doing science. <laughs> okay. So I one quick question. Uh does can semen last that long? <laughs> can, I mean Yes. Yeah. More than a hundred <laughs> years. Because that is yes. terrifying. <laughs> if it's <laughs> like just to think of what is is in my motel six bed. Don't take oh, a black light to yeah. it, Rebecca. Right. Do not ever take I'm telling you, you will thank me for this later. Live okay. in ignorance. Never take a UV light into a hotel room. <laughs> All right. And the other the other question, um, mitochondrial DNA. Uh, can you uh, really evaluate mitochondrial DNA and s make it so specific? Like, yes, this is this person. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the no, you best can't. you can do? Uh, you can say 
depending on how many mutations have occurred in it um, and on what areas and what you're looking at, you can say that this person might be related to um, the donor of the sample. Okay. And that's about as close as you can get. I cannot believe that in the article it includes that they figured out that the um, uh, profile that they have was from a Jewish person and that they had dark hair. Like Last I knew, that was not something that we found out from mitochondrial DNA. Yeah. Oh, really? That, that's a lot of mixed um, in the article, too. And I don't know if it's, you know, if it's the person who did the analysis of the report, there's a lot of mixed information. Yeah. Um, mitochondrial DNA does not code for that kind of information. Yeah. That's not its job. And so I think there's, you know, some confusion. Also, it's going to tell you if you're related, but only in one of your parents. Right. Mm-hmm. It's maternal. The other mm-hmm. thing I would bring up is the use of, say, a 100% match. <laughs> That's not actually how DNA is reported uh, in a forensic context. You may say that you have a match, like say that, you know, even nuclear DNA analysis that one profile matches another. But then you follow that up with saying actually using population genetics. And so even when you get a, a quote, really good match, which would be like the chances of it coming from a contributor that is not this individual is one in four trillion. I mean, a number that's like, you know, where are they getting those numbers? Well, they have, you know, genetic population genetics information for each of the individual markers, and then there's statistical analysis they do, technical jargon, blah, blah, blah. Um, and all of that then would give you this answer that's numerical, um, which could be very high, it could be very low, depending on, you know, how complete the profile was. But to say something is 100% match, that really sets off my bullshit alarm because yeah. <laughs> that's not how the information is reported. And the person doing the analysis here should know better. And, and that, that brings me to the point of, you know, the guy who is claiming to have made the discovery, the one who wrote the book is an amateur, but he teamed up with an actual scientist. And so I can almost forgive him in making some really basic mistakes and uh, bunging things up. And I can forgive the Daily Mail because they're the Daily Mail. Uh, <laughs> but what about this scientist? Who is he? Like, does he, he claims to have developed some new technique for uh, extracting this DNA. But uh, I would imagine that if he has an effective technique, that should be something that he would want to share with the rest of the community and maybe publish something about. Like, uh, Amanda, is that, isn't that how that works? Like, if you develop something in the lab, you, exactly. you would publish it. And he's calling it, um, was it vacuuming? Cell yeah. vacuuming, <laughs> which, which is a technique that I have heard of. I haven't heard of his name attached to it. <laughs> Uh, at all. And just doing a brief uh, search on him, I see nothing that he's published about it. Uh, So I don't know where he gets off on saying that he invented it. Um, You know, maybe it's a slight variation on the technique that does exist. And if he has invented it, and it works so well that you get 100% matches, then why isn't he publishing about this? There would be the the field is, is ready for information on that. And he would absolutely be able to publish uh, if I mean, big time. There's something to it. So there's a lot to be skeptical about every aspect of this story. All basically. of the aspects. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. So I'll wait for, maybe let's wait. Maybe they'll end up publishing a paper. I'm not going to hold my <laughs> breath. Uh, but until then, I think we can safely assume that this case has not been definitively solved. No. I think so. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. You really, uh, you really helped rip that absolutely to shreds, and I enjoyed it immensely. Nice pun, thank Rebecca. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, I'm so clever. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.